thyroid gland secretes two important hormone that is thyroxin which is also called as T4 and triiodothyronine which is also called as T3. T3 actually regulates the blood calcium level because iodine is the one that activates the thyroid gland to secrete the T3 and the T4 hormones. So the thymus gland is a lobular structure which is located between the lungs. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to another session on chapter 22 that is chemical coordination and integration. I am Dr. Divya, biology faculty, Vidyashram Pre-University College, Mysore, Temple of Excellence. In the previous session of this chapter, we discussed about the hormones that are secreted by the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. In today's session, we shall discuss about the hormones that are secreted by the pineal glands, the thyroid glands the parathyroid glands and the thymus. So we shall begin with the session. Let us first study about one more gland before moving on to the thymus gland which is called as the pineal gland. So the pineal gland is also situated in the brain and this pineal gland it is located in the dorsal side of the forebrain. So in the forebrain if you remember in the previous session we had studied there is one more gland which is called as the hypothalamus, which is present in the forebrain, right? Apart from that, in the forebrain itself, that is on the dorsal side of the forebrain, there is a gland that is present, which is called as the pineal gland. So this pineal gland, it secretes a hormone, which is called as melatonin. Again, this also helps us to understand that it has something to do with the skin. So what exactly is the function of this particular hormone we shall look into. So melatonin plays a very important role in regulation of the 24 hour diurnal rhythm of a body. So we are diurnals right because we 12 hours of work and rest is of sleep that is we have a day and night cycle. So that diurnal regulation or 24 hour diurnal regulation is maintained by the melatonin which is secreted by the pineal gland. Say for example, it helps in maintaining the normal rhythms of the sleep-wake cycle, our body temperature, all that is maintained by the melatonin that is secreted by the pineal glands. And apart from that, it also helps in influencing metabolism, pigmentation of the skin the menstrual cycle as well as the defense capability of a body. So what is the function of the pineal gland? So pineal gland helps us to maintain the asleep and wake up cycle that is the diurnal cycle. Apart from that it also helps us to regulate our body temperature. It also helps us in maintaining a proper metabolism, it helps in deciding the pigmentation, it helps in maintaining a proper menstrual cycle and not just that, it also to some extent helps in providing or increasing the defense capability of a body. Next moving further, let us study about one important gland which is called as the thyroid gland. So this thyroid gland is actually made up of two lobes on either side of the trachea. So what is this trachea? Trachea is nothing but the windpipe, right? So if you see the trachea on either side of the trachea, they are made up of thyroid glands. So they look like a lobe or a loop-like structure, right? So that is why they are made, they're called, this is the first lobe and this one is the second lobe. So therefore they're made up of two lobes and these two lobes are situated on either side of the trachea or the windpipe and both the lobes they are interconnected with a thin flap of connective tissue which is called as isthmus. So the right lobe and the left lobe they are connected by a flap like structure this part which is called as the isthmus. So the thyroid gland is composed of many follicles and stromal tissue. How do the follicles look? Follicles look like small circular structures. If you can see here, the thyroid glands are made up of many follicular like structures or follicles and they are also made up of stromal tissues and each thyroid follicle is made up of follicular cells and 
each of these follicular cells are placed in a cavity. So it is nothing but a cavity. In that cavity, a number of follicular cells are placed which makes the thyroid look like as if they are follicular in nature. And these follicular cells, they mainly synthesize two important hormones that is tetraiodothyronin or it is also called as thyroxin T4 or it is called as triiodothyronin or it is called as T3. So what are the two hormones they secrete? Thyroid gland secretes two important hormone that is thyroxin which is also called as T4 and triiodothyronin which is also called as T3. So T4 and T3 hormones are secreted by them. Next moving further let us study about the thyroid gland. What exactly is the function of the thyroid gland or the T3 and the T4 hormone? What happens if over secretion of thyroid takes place and under secretion of thyroid takes place? So for, to maintain thyroid function properly, iodine is very very important and iodine is usually not got in other food. So that is why what the government do is they actually make fortified salts wherein to the salt itself they add iodine so that our thyroid function will get regulated because iodine is very very important for the normal rate of hormone synthesis in the thyroid. So how much a thyroid hormone should be synthesis? How much the T3 and T4 hormone should be synthesis? All that depends on the iodine that we take in in a diet. So what happens when there is less secretion of thyroid we shall see or underactive thyroid it is called as underactive means less secretion and it is also called as hypothyroidism. So deficiency of iodine in a diet will result in hypothyroidism. Why? Because iodine is the one that activates the thyroid gland to secrete the T3 and the T4 hormones and if our diet is deficient with iodine Iodine we cannot act properly on the thyroid hormone or the thyroid gland. Therefore, the thyroid hormones will not get secreted properly. Therefore, it will lead to hypothyroidism. And also apart from that, it will cause enlargement of the thyroid gland which is called as goiter. So, hypothyroidism leads to goiter. Again, why goiter? Because that is why to avoid goiter, you might have seen some of the people, they have a very huge swelling in their neck, right? That is because of hypothyroidism or because of the lack of iodine in their diet that has caused that particular swelling which is called as goiter. And hypothyroidism during pregnancy also will have a very harmful effect on the baby. What happens is it will cause defective development and improper maturation of the baby. That is the baby will not grow properly like the baby has to grow or gain weight according to a certain time in the mother's womb but that might get stunted or it, the growth might get retarded because of hypothyroidism and this will lead to stunted growth of the baby which is called as cretinism. So what is cretinism? The stunted growth that occurs in the baby in the mother's womb if the mother is hypothyroid in nature. And apart from that, it will also cause mental retardation in the baby. It will cause low IQ quotient in the baby and also it will cause abnormal skin, deaf mutism, etc. And in adult women, hypothyroidism may cause the irregularity of the menstrual cycle. So therefore, it is always better to get your T3 and T4 tested in order for the proper normal functioning of a body to occur. So this is about hypothyroidism. One more is over secretion of the thyroid hormone which is called as or overactive thyroid which is called as hyperthyroidism. So hyperthyroidism usually can occur because of cancer. So don't get confused. Hyperthyroidism will not cause thyroid cancer. But because of the cancer occurring in the thyroid, it can cause overactive thyroid hormone secretion which is called as hyperthyroidism. So due to cancer, the thyroid gland will get overactive or Due to the development of certain nodules or extra growths on the thyroid gland, 
the rate of synthesis and secretion of the thyroid hormone will increase to abnormally high level. So, every hospital will have certain clinical range below which the thyroid hormone should not be there and above which the thyroid hormone should not be there. So, this actually if the thyroid secretion is too much more than the clinical reference, it will lead to a condition which is called as hypothyroidism and this hyperthyroidism leads to a lot of adverse conditions in the body and overall it will affect the health of the individual. So, this is about hypothyroidism. Next, talking about goiter. So, we had studied, right? It may lead to a disorder called as goiter. What? Iodine deficiency. So, what happens in this goiter? We shall look into. So, goiter is actually caused because of deficiency of iodine and this iodine will not allow the or the deficiency of iodine will prevent the proper secretion of the hormones from the thyroid gland leading to swelling in the neck. There is one more condition in hyperthyroidism which is called as exothalmic goiter. So, this exothalmic goiter is a form of hypothyroidism and here the symptoms are the enlargement of the thyroid gland will take place. Apart from that, the protrusion of the eyeball. The eyeballs which are located in the sockets will start to protrude as if it is going to pop out. So, that protrusion of the eyeballs will occur and it will also increase the basal metabolic rate and apart from that, it will also cause weight loss which is called as the Graves disease. So, therefore, exophthalmic goiter can also lead to Graves disease. So, there is a difference, do not get confused, there is a difference between goiter and exothalmic goiter. Goiter is caused because of hypothyroidism. Exothalmic goiter is caused because of hyperthyroidism. So, that is the difference, do not get confused here. So, next moving on to one more thyroid hormone, what all role they play. Apart from that, thyroid hormones, they play a very important role in the maintaining the basal metabolic rate. So, I told you hyperthyroidism can increase the basal metabolic rate, but the basal metabolic rate should always be maintained and thyroid hormone is one such hormone which helps in regulating the basal metabolic rate. So, these hormones, they, they support the formation of the process of red blood cells. That is why thyroid hormones, so they also support the process of red blood cell formation and thyroid hormone, they control the metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins and fats. And not just that, thyroid hormones, they help in maintaining the water and electrolyte balance in the body. And apart from that, the thyroid gland also secretes a protein hormone which is called as thyrocalcitonin or it is called as TCT and this TCT actually regulates the blood calcium level. To maintain the red blood calcium level, thyrocalcitonin is very important. And what is this thyrocalcitonin? It is a protein hormone that is secreted by the thyroid gland that helps in maintaining the calcium levels in the body. These are the important functions of the thyroid hormone. So, we learnt now what happens if overactive thyroid that is hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism and apart from that we also studied what are the different roles of the thyroid hormone. So, this was about the thyroid gland. So, next talking about one more gland which is parathyroid gland. They are the different glands, endocrine glands that are present in the body. So, it's talking about parathyroid glands. So, parathyroid glands are also present in the neck region and in humans, there are four parathyroid glands that are present on the back side of the thyroid gland. So, if you can see here, on the back of the thyroid gland, four parathyroid glands are situated and these parathyroid glands have a different function. Let's look into it. So, uh, the parathyroid glands, they secrete peptide hormone which is called as parathyroid hormone and this parathyroid hormone is regulated by the circulating levels of calcium ions. So, how much amount of calcium is present in the blood depends on the secretions of the thyroid hormone protein that we had discussed earlier that is thyrocalcitonin. Now, Therefore, both are interconnected and how much 
the secretion of PTH that is the secretion of the parathyroid gland or the secretions of the parathyroid gland which is called as the parathyroid hormone how much that hormone should be secreted again here depends on the level of calcium ion circulating in the human body so therefore parathyroid glands and thyroid glands are interconnected to one another the parathyroid hormone actually increases the calcium levels in the blood and the parathyroid hormone therefore they directly act on the bones and they stimulate the process of bone resorption that is dissolution of or demineralization of the bone will occur and the parathyroid hormone also stimulates the reabsorption of calcium by the renal tubules that is the tubules of the kidney and therefore it increases calcium ion absorption from the digested food. So proper calcium if it has to be absorbed from whatever food we take in for that also the parathyroid hormone is very very important and therefore it is understood that parathyroid hormone is hypercalcemic hormone means it helps in increasing the calcium content in the body and it which means that is blood calcium levels and along with the thyrocalcitonin that is TCT this parathyroid hormone plays a very important role in maintaining the calcium in the blood level in the body because calcium is one of the important components in the body for various processes to occur properly so this is the function of the parathyroid gland next moving further let us study about the thymus gland so the thymus gland is a lobular structure which is located between the lungs that is behind the sternum where is the sternum present so we have a rib cage on the either side and the rib cages are held together by the sternum right so the exactly at the sternum in between the lungs if you can see here this part this is the thymus gland that is present what is the function of this thymus gland? Let's look into on the ventral side of the iota of the heart and the thymus it plays a very very important role in the overall development of the immune system and this thymus gland it secretes a peptide hormone which is called as thymosin and thymosin plays a very important role in the differentiation of T lymphocytes. So we have learnt about T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes, they are the immune cells. So if these immune cells have to get differentiated and provide immunity in the body then therefore the thymus gland should get activated. Therefore thymus gland is one such gland which secretes hormones that help in increasing a body's immunity and therefore they provide a cell mediated immunity. So that is why thymus gland is very very important and apart from that the thymosin that is secreted by the thymus gland it helps in producing various antibodies to produce humoral immunity so what are antibodies antibodies are substances that fights against the foreign bodies such as the bacteria fun the pathogen various pathogens viruses entering into a body so to secrete the relevant antibodies to that particular pathogen also the thymus gland secretion which is called as the thymosin hormone is very very important and thymus is degenerated in old individuals in old individuals the secretion of the thymus or the activity of the thymus is it reduces as we grow old or as we age that is why it re, um, results in the production of less thymosins and less thymosin production means less humoral immunity in a body and as a result the immune system or the immune responses of old persons become weak. So thymus is highly active in younger people when compared to that of older people. So as we age the thymus gland stops being that active as in the youngsters and they will start to secrete very less thymosin. So very less thymosin means very less immunity in the body and the immunity keeps on diminishing as we age because of the inactiveness of the thymus gland. So this was about the thymus gland. So this was about this particular session wherein we discussed about the functions of the different endocrine glands such as the pineal gland that is located in the brain, the thyroid and the parathyroid glands that is located in the neck region and the thymus gland that is located in between the lungs that is in the sternum of the 
rib cage in the coming session we shall discuss about the adrenal glands which is present above the kidney the pancreas what hormones they secrete and we shall also discuss about the gonads that is the hormone secreted by the gonads so when i say gonads it is the hormone secreted by the ovary in the case of female and testis in the case of male so that we shall study in detail so we shall meet again in the coming session thank you